Oh, do you know what my costume is? I don't. <laughs> I just love this dress and the shawl together. I figured I could be some lady of the night. Hello everyone, how are you today? My name's Taylor, I live in Baltimore, Maryland, and here on my YouTube channel, I feature content that's generally focused on knitting and spinning. In this episode of what I call the Thread to Mend podcast, I sit down and I share the things that I'm making in real time. I also want to share with you in this video a few fall favorites, um, I guess specific to October, but not really. So um, if you're interested in just hearing about some of the things that I've been loving lately, then please do keep watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me so much in growing my channel. And to all of my new subscribers, I want to say a big hello. I want to, um, first I know we're going to talk about the knitting at the front, but since I'm holding on to this, I thought I'd show you my cool Halloween -y mug. I got this from David's tees and I didn't follow instructions and keep it out of the dishwasher. The little plug at the bottom of this hollow mug cracked and there's moisture now inside it. But the nice thing about that, all the glitter actually sits on the mug where you can see it. Whereas when it was a new mug, it was always beneath the coffee and the, the glitter was a sparse experience. I'm going to review with you the projects that I have been making the longest first. So if you haven't been around for a while, I've only really featured this project in like one video so far. Of course, every project I make will have its own featured video, but right now I'm knitting the collar, the shawl collar. It's a folded over, um, stitched down collar of Michelle Wong's row cardigan. And, um, here is the back. You can see it is one of opulent cables. The sleeves are very long. I think that my gauge may be slightly off on the row measure. I always make sleeves that are longer than I need them. I usually add about two inches to any written pattern when I knit my sleeves because um, I find that the elbow will kind of eat up a little bit of the length of the arm as you continue to wear it. And I don't know about you, but my sweaters, the arms don't sit straight. They're, when you lay them flat, they're always bent out at the elbow. So I add a couple inches when making my garments. But this is folded over like four inches at the cuff and still quite long, which makes it really cozy and a really nice layer over other sweaters um, because I find like if you're layering knits over knits, it will be awkward in the sleeves, but because these sleeves are so big, it fits and it doesn't feel constricted in any way around the elbow or where things bend because you have a lot of fabric that you can move to that corner of the arm and it doesn't feel like I'm stuffed. Uh, when picking up the button band for the collar, I picked up and knit three out of every four stitches. One thing that I wish this cable design had is like pockets inside. I might consider just knitting a stockinette square and stitching it to the inside of this garment so that I have pockets. <laughs> um, it feels like it'd be a shame to have such a big gorgeous sweater with no pockets in it. So I'm, I'm not sure though if that would make the front of it too heavy and maybe it would hang differently or weird. It might also contribute to a better fit at the same time to have a little bit of weight holding it down because I feel like there's so much yarn in this garment. It's very puffy and big. Um, I might try it on for you so you can get a look of what it looks like in the shoulders. It's a set and sleeve. I don't know if you noticed that I'm dressed for the holiday. <laughs> this is just a floor length velvet gown I found at the thrift store many, many months ago. I've been waiting to wear it. And this, of course, is my feral shawl that I designed. I knit this with my hand spun and I accidentally washed it in the washing machine. So it is quite fuzzy and a little, it's not misshapen, but you know how things are when you felt them, they kind of um, exaggerate themselves a little bit. So I have this kind of like waviness to the shape of this that I feel like wasn't there before. Um, but 
this is super, super warm and very soft. So this is the current row cardigan. I'm super excited with how it's turning out. I feel like it's a little broad in the, in the bust area for me and in the upper arms, but that does make for good layering. And although I have blocked each of the pieces before sewing this garment together, I think once it's all kind of washed and blocked fully, it might be a little bit more natural fitting. Um, of course, too, the collar's not finished. So this is about the length of one side. And then I'll, I'm instructed to knit, I think about eight inches and then fold it in to stitch down. So theoretically, the shape of it will be a little bit more kind of bigger. It won't be so flared. Um, although I do kind of like the flare at the top, it'll be more stiff and kind of shapely. The arms are just kind of big. This is my row cardigan. Before I completely move on, I want to mention that Tracy left a really helpful comment on my video about knitting the row cardigan. Um, I previously posted, I'll just link to it up here, a video um, that Tracy commented on. Let me know that in a lot of the Ravelry project pages, knitters mentioned wishing that they had cast off the stitches around the top back piece uh, because in the pattern it instructs you to leave live stitches on the needles when i got to the part where i was piecing everything together and about to pick up stitches for the collar i decided i would just go in and bind it off and then pick up into the fabric for the collar as knitters wish they had done and I do see how it adds more structure to the shape of the back neck so I am happy that I've done that even though I haven't even worn this garment yet but I do have quite a few ends to weave in from that kind of afterthought moment but I always feel that wherever you have ends to weave in it's always a good opportunity to take that and use it to duplicate stitch over areas where different pieces connect because it does fill in a lot of the gaps and I'm very particular about that. I always duplicate stitch little areas of my sweaters where I notice that it does, doesn't hug in close enough. I did weave in this end from the cuff, but of course, because they're folded over, my little end is sticking out. So I am going to very likely felt that end into the yarn so that I don't see it popping out. In retrospect, I wish I kept that tail or at least started with a longer tail that would go in all the way up maybe eight inches or so up the sleeve so that it's never a question of it ever popping out again. The Row Cardigan has been such a joy. I never thought I would have finished it as quickly as I had and or have been finishing it and I just got on a roll with it one week and didn't stop and once I got the back panel finished knowing that the sleeves and the front sides were simply two of the three charts repeated again and again and again and again I knew it was an easy kind of busy knit from that point out. Now I do have a new cast on in this bag that I'm going to show you last because I've made the least amount of progress on it, but I have been knitting quite a lot and I have had in hibernation, you might know, my Ducat sweater number two. Now I've already knit Kate Davies Ducat sweater before using Pearl Soho silk mohair and I modified the sleeves to be bell shaped sleeves. And in this variation, I am knitting a fingering weight held together with silk mohair. Previously, I did just two strands of silk mohair, so it was a very, very airy, open, and light garment. This one is going to be a spring and fall type of warm garment because it has all that wool in addition to silk mohair. And I'm sorry that it's so wrinkled, um, but as you can see, it is a top-down raglan construction. and. I've finished the first sleeve. I've even done the ribbing and cast it off. But I did, again, modify the sleeve. So what I did instead for this sleeve was after I had reached the same stitch count for the pattern, I just continued to knit and stock in it further than the pattern described until I reached my wrist. And once at the wrist, I did a round of decreases where I knit two and then knit two together all the way around. And knit one more row and then again knit one knit two together all the way around and then knit one more row and then i switched to my smaller ribbing needle and continued to do a twisted rib i'll get a little closer here for you to see 
and it gave a nice kind of delicate little detail to it. And that is my current version of the Ducat. I am keeping this knit as a lunchtime, lunch break stocking knit moment. So this is going to probably take me another week or two to finish the sleeve. And I'm also, uh, of course, having to finish the body, which you can see is undone. I'm going to do the collar and then I think I'm playing a little bit of a game of yarn chicken. So I might scrap the entire idea of turning this into a cardigan as I anticipated doing. Right now I have this skein left over for the second sleeve in addition to this one here. So this is all the yarn I have left for this. You may or may not recall, this is not the first sweater I've knit with this yarn. I was previously knitting Andrea Mowry's Daydreamer, and I later on just decided I would stitch it together and turn it into a heating pad cover because I just wasn't getting the fabric I really, really wanted out of this garment. So I'm repurposing that, and I hope I don't have to rip into any of this so that I can finish the garment I'm making right now. Last project I have to share in today's video is a brand new cast on. I saw so many people on Instagram and here on YouTube knitting the new Stephen West mystery shawl and I just simply know myself well enough that I agonize over color choices and the placement of things and I did not want to participate in the knit along surprise moment happening but I did look through his catalog of patterns on Ravelry and I chose one of my favorites and I picked all the yarn in my stash to knit this. So I'm going to go through each of the skeins that I chose for this project and share with you the small progress I've made on this. So in this project bag, I have all my working yarn and my project. It is big enough that I could put all my yarn in here, but I tend to keep separate the extra skeins in a place at home so that I'm not carrying them around whenever I leave the house. This is Barocco. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce this word. It is 60% ultra fine merino wool, 20% baby alpaca, and 20% yak. And you can tell that the yak and alpaca give this yarn quite a bit of drape. Originally I purchased this yarn with the intention of knitting something more like a t-shirt, something with lace, um, or even a tank top. And I bought five skeins of this. Uh, if I haven't mentioned, this is 50 grams each, of course, and 164 yards. And then here I have hand spun yarn. This is one I've shown on my podcast before, of course. This is a bat that I made using a bunch of sample fibers that I got from a friend who was um, their coworker's wife was de-stashing all of their fiber supply here in Baltimore. And I just got very lucky. Yeah, she gave me all of this fiber and I put it on my drum carter carded it up, spun it into this kind of tweedy, silky, lovely, I didn't write anything down. I know I shared it and it's recorded on my channel somewhere. And then I have two more colors in this project. There's this lovely, warm, almost pinkish taupe and this natural, um, oh, so this is from one of the sock crates from Knit Crate. I will locate the tag and update my Ravelry page when I have a second. And I'm holding that together with Ocean by the Sea's Silk Mohair in one of her natural dye colorways. And then this is Joseph and Ani from, oh, what's the name of that mill? It's in the state of Washington. Abundant Earth Fibers, Joseph and Ani. And this is the oatmeal colorway. I have a sweater, I actually wore it just the other day. I, I knit the stasis pullover using this yarn and it is gorgeous. This I haven't cracked into yet on the project. So far I've only worked into uh, three of the four colors throughout, but I feel like it's a very warm meets cool, light meets dark moment. And I live for that right now. I have a few favorite things I'd love to share this fall. And one thing that I've really been loving is this hand cream. I picked this up at Target. I wanted to share things that are really accessible to people. It's like a pumpkin spice latte of hand cream. It's just now, you know what I mean? And then the other thing is someone commented on my hair that they liked um, my hair and I thought I would share a hair product. It's this brand Living Proof. I love the fragrance that they choose 
for all their products. They pretty much all have the same fragrance to them. And this is the Instant Defrizzer. So it's kind of like a dry shampoo, but instead of being a powder that dries your hair out of oils, it kind of applies the finest amount of oil in a nice gorgeous spray. So it does eliminate frizz and it gives this incredible shine without it weighing your hair down and looking greasy. It's like the lightest application of oil you can possibly muster from a product. So this has been a really nice refresher between days that I wash my hair, like today I have not washed my hair, but I did kind of spray this into you know one side of it and then the other side and kind of around the top back. After I put it up and I wore it for a little bit, I did use dry shampoo in the sides here and here where I get kind of greasy looking. So that's something that I do to keep my hair looking and feeling clean between washings because I really try not to wash my hair more than twice a week if possible, especially if I straighten my hair. So if I wear my hair straight, I can stretch my hair out longer between washings. I also, I just recently trimmed my hair and I'll just take it down for a second because it's falling out anyway. But I do try to trim my hair very regularly. And when I say regularly, like every three months. Um, and when I say trim my hair, I mean, I just cut the ends of it and shape it up a little from the front, just the slightest amount. And I feel like that helps me continue to grow my hair long without it being too much. Um, if I don't keep my ends trimmed and I allow split ends to kind of get worked into my hair, um, it can become such a chore to maintain it. On the occasion, if I don't keep up with my three month trimming, I will chop like a few inches off at a time just to keep up with split ends as they continue to arise. Um, and I did purchase high end scissors so that I have a really, really sharp blade to cut my hair. That's one thing. If you're cutting your own hair, just make sure you have good hair scissors because it's not even worth cutting your hair if you're cutting it with dull, a dull blade, to be honest. Like, don't cut your hair with a dull blade. It's not worth it. It's just don't. One last favorite thing I want to share are all of the bulbs that I have invested in to plant for the spring of 2022. They're starting to arrive in the mail for fall planting and this weekend I plan to put out my hosta bulbs that just arrived in the mail as well as my anemones that I've had starting in the basement for the last couple weeks. I'm going to insert a quick little video of my garden as it is right now. Uh, I took this video just the other day so this is just a little snippet of how things are going currently. It is late October. I have a little bit of cleaning up to do still in the garden but the jalapenos are doing great. My perennial flowers, I might move around in the spring, but next year I definitely plan to plant more marigold and the perennial blueberries, of course, are really growing up. They are a high bush variety, so they're gonna get nice and tall. Uh, these are self-seeded Black Eyed Susans, you can see little flower buds here, but they grow up really big in the spring and summer. Uh, the asparagus I relocated is holding on. I hope it'll survive. Uh, the third one I cut back because most of it died, but you can see there's still some growth there. And the third one that I planted in the spring and haven't had to move at all is doing pretty good given the lack of sun in this very shaded area. Um, but I pulled down everything from the cattle panels except the squash and I'm just waiting for some of these fruits to really ripen completely and then I'll take those down. The basil I should harvest before too soon and the pawpaw trees are doing great. This is number one. In the back we have number two and then in the black raspberry bushes there there's number three. I always experiment with growing kale in every part of the garden just to see how well it does and it's kind of like a trap plant for me out here. I get a lot of a lot of bugs too. That, well, I don't know. I like to think that having white flies all over my kale keeps white flies off of something else. So uh, it's trial and error. But the little mums I relocated from the front yard out here, the orange mums turned yellow and I just didn't like the color scheme anymore. So. I moved them out here by the yellow St. John's wort, which I'm going to really cut back a lot this spring. And the blackberries I'm trying to kind of contain to one area. So I dug out 
just a couple small black berry canes. I would very much like a new birdbath dish for the stand because it's a little worse for wear, but that just came with the house, so I'm just keeping it until I find something to replace it. Hello, you want your food? Okay, it's time to go back inside, but I wanted to show you the garden in October of 2021. to share really quick the front containers I just potted up. Uh, we have a little grass, some hookera, a kale or cabbage, and some mystery plant I brought home back in July that's still continuing to hang on. This gorgeous giant mum, I'm just gonna put my hand here for scale. It's humongous. It was only $17 at the local Ace Hardware and I love shopping there. So I picked that up and I'm excited for this guy. Anyway, that is all for this week's episode of the Thread to Men podcast. I want to thank you all so much for watching. You can find me on social media as Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. I have a lot of fun videos planned for the coming months, so I hope that you'll stick around. Please subscribe if you have not already, and if you are subscribed, make sure that you hit the bell for notifications so you know when I have new content uploaded. I hope you all have a wonderful day and that you take care. No, no. <laughs> you do not want your way in here. <laughs> Girl, you're going to get your ass.